So pardon me guys, I'm absolutely filthy. I just got off work and my wife and I came into town to get a soda at the gas station and uh, just got done watching Johnny B's video on Ken Hackathorn and FUD lore and all this and I thought I'm going to sit down and make a video here because I'm almost tired of this. And don't get me wrong, I'm not pitching for Wilson Combat in any way, shape, or form. I own nothing Wilson Combat. I can't afford anything Wilson Combat. But I have been watching Ken Hackathorn for years now, and him and Masa have kind of been Masada Ayub, Mass, however you want to call him. They've been, uh, they've been uh, pretty influential to me. And what's funny is I, I really, I don't agree with everything they say, but they've been in this business a long time, and I generally, when I talk to people that are older and have been around firearms for extreme amount of time and have the video evidence to back up that they've been around firearms for a very long amount of time, I tend to listen and give them a little more credence than I do uh, just ignore them before I even know what's going to be said. But uh, here lately, uh, they have been on a tear that's <laughs> kind of absolutely... Uh, set off some younger people in the community now what i've noticed is the majority of the time that people go after ken hackathorn they'll take a little clip out of one of his videos and they will just attack it they won't watch the whole video in context and like i said i'm not stumping for these guys whatsoever but i just watched johnny b's video and in one hand he was going after uh Mossad for saying that he would put his hand on a gun when he was at a gas station and keep his head on a swivel and Johnny made absolutely fun of that but in the next segment when Ken Hackathorn said you probably don't need to be carrying appendix if you watch the whole video he says you can carry appendix if you want you just can't do it in my class for insurance reasons his class his rules uh, but he just doesn't prefer it he likes to carry outside the waistband and if you watch his training videos he explains why and one of the reasons why is in a setting down situation, it's a lot harder to get to that appendix carry gun than it is outside of the waistband. And he said most of the time people are getting attacked. They're either sitting in a restaurant or in a vehicle. And he, he's gone through several videos on the subject. That's just his advice. You can take it or leave it. You don't have to make an entire video destroying him over it or calling him a FUD. I'm, I'm kind of sick of this FUD term because... I've lived around these old guys my whole life, old cowboys. I lived around, you know, the old single action double barrel shotgun crew my whole life. And out of the hundreds of people I've known in this area that are like that, I've only met one who was seriously against anybody owning an AR-15 or some automatic pistol. However, do you know how many times I have been told by other people that I shouldn't be carrying or owning a single action or a double barrel shotgun for any reason because that's just not practical or it's something stupid like or you don't you're not going to be able to take on the biker gang or whatever i'm absolutely fine with anybody carrying or owning an ar-15 a glock i've said that over and over and over again but don't be the reverse fud who just because some older guy who's been spending 50 years with a revolver and knows how to use it goes after you know don't go after him because in the words of John Wayne, you may be able to get that fancy gun out of that fancy holster before that old guy with the old-fashioned six-shooter blows a hole in you. It's just a matter of fact. It's a matter of how many years they've been doing it, how well they do it. Now, just to address a few things, there has been an awful lot of people completely mad about those guys saying you shouldn't ever drop a slide on an empty chamber on a 1911. And a lot of people say, yes, well, we did that in the military. Great, that's fine. Military guns, especially the 1911s from the 60s, 70s, those guns were so shot loose and broke loose. They were worth a lot on the market as uh, collector's pieces, but a lot of them are loose because constantly being having the slide dropped on them without anything in the chamber. I was taught that years ago. You don't do that. And that's an older generation thing from guns in the past. And it's not just, you know, the World War II generation. You don't drop the flint or the cock on a flint lock without a flint in it because it will fall down and hit the bottom with no cushion and it will generally if you do that a few times you can break the cock off there's several other things that you don't do that on you don't dry fire a rim fire you know you shouldn't put a shotgun shell in a semi-automatic shotgun and then drop the uh 
drop the bolt on it because the uh, extractor was not designed to do that. You will break your extractors, and I have done that. Uh, I was always told that, and you know what? You don't have to worry about it so much with the modern guns. Obviously, Glocks, whatever, you know, there's, there's not a lot of mass slamming there. But all the people who say you should never do that, well, just bear in mind that these are older guys talking about older guns, and a lot of people don't realize that. There's another thing they're talking about, weapon-mounted lights. Now, that's a great thing on a home defense shotgun, something like that. It is absolutely good, but I have to agree with Ken Hackathorn on this. If you're walking around in your house in the middle of the night in a tense situation, you heard a noise, don't you think it would be a better deal to have a handheld flashlight that you're using to light up the room? Because supposing it's your kid just out stumbling around or some family member like it is most of the time in those situations. Suppose you have a light on a Glock. You use the light instead of the one in your hand. You could have a light on your gun. I'm not, absolutely not against it whatsoever. But what his point in the video was, your Glock has no safety except for that trigger. And if you point that thing at something, a tense situation, hit the light, and use that gun to illuminate whatever is in front of you, and you are running at extreme risk of killing a loved one. And so the best thing, in my opinion, is to have a weapon-mounted light on your home defense gun and a handheld. Light them up with a handheld light long before you point a gun at something you don't know what you're pointing at. So there's a few things that need to be taken into consideration here. And like I said, I, I don't take everything these guys say as gospel. For one thing, they say that they think out revolvers are outdated for everyday carry. Uh, unless it's like a backup gun, and the and that's just their opinion. They can have that opinion. I carry a revolver everywhere. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's gospel, but you don't have to tear them down just because of an opinion that they might have on appendix carry or a weapons-mounted flashlight or optics on a handgun. All they're saying is you don't have to have those things. If you actually watch Hackathorn's videos, he says it's perfectly fine if you want to do it. He says he has piles of guns with him. It took him longer to learn to use them as well as he was using iron sights. So you really need to watch the videos in whole before you start really tearing into people, I think. Uh, like I said, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with anything here. All I'm saying is sometimes the older generation is a little bit wiser for a reason, especially the guys that have been around it for a gazillion years. Now, he did make some distinctions between law enforcement, military, and the everyday um, citizen. And he probably shouldn't have done it and said it the way he did because that really set some people off. And I don't agree with that. You should, and he, by the way, he never said you're, you shouldn't be able to have what the law enforcement or the military has. He was just saying it's not necessarily a thing you might need. And uh, I'm of the same opinion, you know. Uh, I feel like I'm perfectly safe where I'm at situationally with a six-shot revolver and a speed loader. That's 12 shots. If I need more than 12 shots, I'm fighting my way to the pickup where I can get to a rifle. But overall, that's just my thoughts. Don't take this over to 11 Bang Bang. This is my own channel. Ethan probably has different views than I do. And so this is just my channel, my thoughts. If Ethan wants to put something out on 11 Bang Bang, that's his channel. He can do whatever he wants, but this is just an opinion. And we should all be willing to hear other people's opinion and maybe take and think about that opinion before we completely destroy it and bash it and try to drag the person who said it through the dirt. Anyway, that's all I got to say. Thanks for watching. Bye.